Hey, everybody. Welcome back to 11 O'Clock Rock. Interesting, interesting interview we've got today uh, with a uh, new friend, Tom Reed. Good to have you here. Thomas Thanks, Reed. Uh, man, this is a, a really, really different interview for us here on 11 O'Clock Rock. Um, we're talking today about uh, experiences that have happened in your life, and mm -hmm. it's kind of uh, become somewhat of the mission of uh, a lot of your work uh, to uh, bring more awareness to... Uh, the UFO sightings and uh, the abductions that have happened surrounding and around your family. It's been kind of an amazing ride, it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, and I, I think it's important because we kind of jumped in with both feet at one point and started talking about it, and um, because our case has as much evidence that it does, uh, it's, I think it's important to, at this point, see it through. This is one of the most studied cases in U.S. history, is that correct? It's said to have more evidence than any other case ever more investigated. Evidence. And that's a, a lot of what you brought here today right. is tons of evidence, and uh, it's uh, laden with polygraph tests and accounts from officials. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about how kind of this all got started. Where did, where did this go? Well, our case actually is dated back <coughs> older than the Betty and Barney Hill case in, in New England. And at that point, um, our, my father actually ran for office and, and, um, and with that said, ran into some other political figures that decided to take this case to the UN in 1992, where it was discussed back then. After that, um, there was uh, an account, actually, that involved my brother in Indianapolis. And this is what time period? 2009. And that case, because of our back, uh, because of our history and, and that was... Uh, had been looked at uh, by our attorney Robert Blackman. Um, there were records it, were involving our family, so this rapid uh, response team came out, the star team. There was Debbie Cobble <coughs> investigated it, who the book Intruders was written about, um, Officer White, um, the detectives, and they found radiation and magnetic fields, and there were medical reports and that sort of thing. So it kind of fueled the entire investigation. And of course, afterwards, we were asked to take polygraph tests just to validate <coughs> what we were saying. And, of course, you know, we passed, and that was taken right here in Knoxville. So the, the event that we're talking about is you physically saw, was it you and your brother that physically saw a UFO? It was um, my mother, my ex-wife, my brother, um, and myself, and my grandmother. And this, this all took place in Indiana? It is a combination of <clears throat> the, the 60s and 2009. Yeah, because this has been surrounding your life for a long right, time. It's not right. like just all of a sudden. Yeah, that's what's inter interesting about it is that it actually started way back in the 60s and nothing had happened since then. And you saw something as a child? Yes, I did. My brother and I, we had a 75-acre horse farm in New England. And what, I mean, if you can briefly, what, like, what did you see? What was it? We, um, what we came across on this path was what resembled... Uh, a pile of dirt is how we first referenced it. It was just a, if you were to take a dirty turtle shell, and um, basically that's kind of what it was, but it was huge. We had passed a rock and a tree that looked like a wishbone, and, and there it was. And, um, and at that point, you know, we had seen it on our property actually more than once. There's a couple of accounts. And um, it was witnessed by everyone in our family and um, some neighbors down the street, actually. And so uh, authorities at this point, you, they come out and they, they well, figure out what it is? at the or? time, no. The authorities didn't come out at that time. They actually investigated it in the 80s when um, they had more equipment and there were more reports of sightings. There was actually a, another sighting that was given a valley rating, it's called uh, CE2, which was seven miles from our home the same month that we had reported seeing it. And at that point, it kind of fueled some conversations with the family, but, of course, with political aspirations, no one wanted to talk about it at mm -hmm. that point. Mm -hmm. However, it was still investigated and still had a solid record and did go to the UN for, you know, to, uh, as a topic, along with others. This is really fascinating because <clears throat> you were saying earlier, it wasn't necessarily just a, a, a UFO sighting, but things would happen later on in life that would just kind of keep surfacing. And it seemed to be just kind of happening to your family, it sounds like. Well, there was something to it. We don't know what that is. Yeah. Uh, my, um, my son... Um, has seen to have some uh, documented heightened abilities. He was evaluated at the, the uh, Miami Children's Hospital. He was a uh, member of People to People, gifted. He was way above gifted in superior range. He um, has tested off the charts. He tested down here with uh, Michael Buckner, who was a director of a facility here. And he even um, put um, on paper that uh, his abilities were not just normal development. There was something there. So whether we can attest and say this has anything mm -hmm. to do with it, I'm not going to jump to conclusions, mm -hmm. but what's on paper is on paper. Sure. So that's why I kind of stay to the facts. I, I have something interviewed. 
or a person interviewed or a situation evaluated, and I'll get the documents and I'll share those documents right. because I find this pretty much is um, difficult to swallow with some yeah. other people, sure. and it's difficult for me to talk about too because it's. But I think it's important because you hear so many outlandish stories right. that I don't even really want to get into that. I want to. This is this person saw this. This is documented here. I live right here in Knoxville. They're going to be filming a National Geographic um, TV show about it. Yeah, tell us a little bit about that. I just signed an agreement with National Geographic um, for a um, part of an eight-part, one segment of an eight-part um, series with National Geographic that is going to focus on 2009. And being that the polygraph was taken here and the, uh, the doctor that attested to some of these findings was here, um, I think they're, I'm looking to, I'm gonna, I'm, from what I understand, it's actually even going to be filmed at the advanced polygraph services down here on um, it's right here off of Main Street, I guess, right? Hmm. So, so uh, this is this is pretty amazing. Is there anything that you, in your studies of your family, you all found that there were some things that everybody had in common? More so, I mean, is it was it something that you all had in your bodies? Was it something that where where you were? Was it environmental? Well, that's all uh, speculation. Really, yeah. people's opinions. We are we do have the Rh negative bloodline. Rh negative. R, yeah, so you which A and B and O and O negative primarily, uh -huh. and it's really carried through our family. And that's the only really common link that that uh, others are saying. Well, could that, you know, is that a plausible connection? Mm -hmm. You know, could that possibly be a factor? And a lot of people feel that it is. Um, if there was going to be a scientific um, look at this thing, I mean, you'd have to look at. I would imagine you have to look at um, you know traits in the body or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, why else would there Unless it was just something. I mean, New England had a lot of activity back then anyway. And we did live near nuclear power plants and power mm. facilities. And, you know, Connecticut, you know, right there, an electric boat. And there was a lot of, um, you know, command aerospace. And Pratt and & Whitney was not that far. And, and, um, and investigators so, I was reading, too, they, they also came out and, you know, measured uh, different levels of oh, radiation. Yeah, they found radiation. And they found, we have a, we have a video of the investigators that were holding a, a compass within feet of our vehicle, mm. and it just spun. It's actually online. You, you might have seen that. that I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain. Yeah, it is hard to explain. My, my brother had blood coming out of his nose. He lost an hour and something of time. Uh, there were witnesses. There were YouTube videos shot of this orange ball thing that my brother was actually following in his SUV, just wondering what it was. And the next thing you know, he loses an hour. The instrument panels are blown out in his car. Um, he's got droplets of blood, is how it was worded, on his steering wheel. Um, and the vehicle now had radiation on it hmm. that was investigated by authorities and those in the aerospace field mm -hmm. and documented by a detective and an officer mm. and, and, and recorded. This, was record, this investigation was recorded uh, on, a, on camera, and you can clearly see the compass is moving. You can't explain that. So would, if we didn't have that information, I wouldn't right. be here today. Well, and I would imagine in your life you, it's, this is something that you... You probably didn't ask for, but you can't ignore all of the signs. You, you know, if when things keep happening and occurring, you have to naturally ask the questions, and uh, that's kind of uh, contributing to what you spend most of your time. What's your mission now for all of this? Uh, you've got your website, uh, TomReed.info, that we've got pulled up right now. What's what's your mission? What do you spend your time on right now? What's important to you? Well, right now, I think um, you know we've gotten a lot of attention. We've been contacted by a lot of networks, and we've turned down a lot of opportunities because we don't feel it's fitting for for what we want to. Mm -hmm to uh, get across, and I think what that point is, is that there is a scientific point to this, and uh, there's a lot of claims out there, and I'm not going to say that they're not, they don't have something uh, solid, but as far as evidence goes, I think it's about time that, you know, people say to me all the time, or I get emails, you know, where's the proof uh, of these UFOs? Where, where, you know, why does no one have, with all the cameras today, with all the information today, the communication, the ways to film this stuff, why is there any proof? Well, there is proof. And a lot of it gets buried. You know, there's, there's an entertainment aspect to it, and those crazy stories kind of make that entertainment right. world. And the real cases that have the, you know, the proof, you'd be surprised how much of that gets buried and how people sure. find their early demise, which... That's maybe for another show. But. Right, right. Well, uh, Tom Reed, uh, excellent to have you here. Uh, the website, again, is tomreed.info. If there's something that uh, piques your interest, uh, definitely go to the website and find out a little bit more about it. And uh, you live here in Knoxville now, right? Yeah, what's uh, Knoxville? 
Excellent. So uh, uh, thank you for coming and, and sharing. Uh, absolutely. This. It, it sounds like something that there's no way we could possibly can into 10 minutes of talking. No, but absolutely. This is uh, definitely. It's involved. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye out on National Geographic. That's a, that's a great opportunity. Take care. Tom thank Ray, you very thanks much. Thanks so much. Guys, we're going to take a very, very short break. We've got lots more music to come. Don't go away.